I bought my first Logitech wheel in 2013 and it took me till 2019 to actually upgrade it. Today, I'm gonna to go through all the reasons why I didn't upgrade and eventually why I did. The definitive answer to the question, should I upgrade my Logitech wheel is yes and also no. To make this video nice and easy to digest and to keep it a little bit lighthearted, I divided it into three sections. The first section concerns the happy Logitech owner. The second category covers the curious Logitech owner. And the third one and final one is the disgruntled unhappy Logitech owner. All three have very valid reasons to be in each of those categories, but let's get started with the happy Logitech owner. Happy Logitech owners are absolutely everywhere. In some cases though, they're a little bit afraid to speak out because they're there sitting with their budget hardware and they're getting the same sim experience as pretty much everybody else. Meanwhile, they have to compete with the people who've spent a hell of a lot of money and are trying to justify their decisions and trying to tell them how much better their expensive hardware is. The happy Logitech owner probably didn't spend a hell of a lot of money on their wheel. They probably got it down at their local PC world or Best Buy or whatever, or else they got it online or else they simply bought it from a friend who wasn't using it. The happy Logitech owner knows that there are countless mods out there to actually make their Logitech wheel better. The happy Logitech owner knows that you can change steering wheels, you can relocate buttons, you can upgrade your brake pedal, and you can even make your shifter, which is not a sequential shifter, into a sequential shifter with a couple of elastic bands. The Logitech community is absolutely massive and they're incredibly helpful because the people who love using their Logitech wheels, they want other people to get the same type of joy out of their Logitech wheels. In general, the happy Logitech users have spent time investigating and setting up their device properly. So they probably have some very good settings which actually make it feel better than when it came from the factory. The happy Logitech owner also gets an incredible amount of value and satisfaction from the fact that when they're racing on track, if there is someone with a 20,000 euro simulator, they're not guaranteed to be faster than the person sitting at home with their desk mounted or whatever mounted Logitech wheel there's no guarantee that you're gonna be faster with a better wheel. But as time went on, I entered the curious phase. The curious phase was very much about exploring what else was out there. In the meantime, I'd gotten some access to use other people's equipment, but I could never really justify upgrading or whatever, but I was still very open-minded to the idea. So I was very much a happy Logitech user, but I was getting a little bit curious. Some things annoyed me a little bit, like the fact that it makes so much noise. My wife would often be watching TV in the other room and all she could hear was the clickety-clack from the Logitech wheel and it just got very annoying. It wasn't annoying for me because I had headphones on, but for her, it was pretty grinding. The next thing that really got me was the pedals. They kind of annoyed me, to be honest, because I could never find those breaking points or break as late as a lot of other people. So fairly early on in my Logitech journey, I think around 2016 or so, I actually bought a set of load cell pedals, a second hand set of club sport pedals. The load cell made a world of a difference and the standard pedals got the bin. Now in the meantime, Logitech have released the G923, which has a surprisingly good break. I think if I had had the Logitech G923 pedals at the time, I probably wouldn't have shelled out money on the load cell pedals as soon as I did. During this time, it also kind of became apparent that I had the budget to upgrade if I wanted to, but I really wanted to kind of put it into perspective. I wanted to see, well, will the thing that is twice as good um, actually cost twice as much? And nine times out of 10, if you spend twice as much, you're almost guaranteed not to get something that's twice as good. So with the Logitech, for me, when I'd spent about three or 400 euro on the wheel first day, I was looking at spending seven or 800 euro on something that was maybe 20, 30% better. Now the stage that really kind of tipped me over the edge into being more curious was when I was doing very competitive league races with my Logitech wheel and I just found that I lost a little bit of connection with the rear of the car, especially in difficult to drive cars. I didn't know when the car was spinning until it was just that little bit too late. And that was costing me valuable seconds, I was spinning. And to be honest, that was actually impacting my enjoyment for sim racing. So it kind of got to the stage where I was reaching my potential with the hardware. Now, I don't think I ever actually allowed myself to get to the point where I became an unhappy Logitech user. 
I very much understood the settings, I knew the limitations of the hardware, and I knew that it had brought me as far as I could get in my sim racing journey. So I never became an unhappy user, but there are lots of unhappy users out there, and those unhappy users often ask me, what's the story here? Why do you think Logitech is so good? This is nothing like my real race car. Now, therein lies a massive problem. A lot of people jump into simulation by the cheapest possible hardware that they can find, and expect it to feel like their real race car. So the seasoned sim racers know that it's not the same as just jumping into your track car or jumping into a drift car. It's nothing like that. It's a simulation experience. It's trying to get you some of those feelings, but it's not trying to recreate it one for one. A lot of people think that for a thousand euro or two thousand euro, they can build a complete simulator that will make them want to sell their track car. That's just unrealistic. And a lot of the unhappy people fit into that category. Now there are plenty of reasons to actually be unhappy with your Logitech device. Even though I'm a huge fan of Logitech devices, I completely get it. The actual granularity of the forces and the amount of force that you experience isn't that amazing. The pedals that come with them are not great, with the exception of the G923, and I think they are actually very good pedals, especially at the price point. But that brings me to another point, the price point of the G923 kind of brings it closer to some higher level wheels. So the G923 isn't even priced that well. So that kind of makes me unhappy too. And a lot of people who are unhappy are simply impatient. When you start sim racing, you need to learn to sim race. It doesn't matter if you are a world champion, rally driver, or time attack, hill climber, doesn't matter. You need to learn to sim race. Unless you jump into a simulator that's specifically set up for driver training, even then, you still need to learn certain things which are different to your real car. It is like jumping from real car to real car in real life. You really need to learn how to use that simulator and how to get the best out of it. But to cut to the chase, should you actually upgrade? I've covered the three categories of people who actually own these devices, but each one of them has a slightly different answer. If you are a happy Logitech owner, invite yourself, allow yourself to get into that curious category. There is more out there and there is a reason that people say there are better wheels out there and there is a reason that people try to get you to upgrade. I think that the only people who never upgrade from a Logitech wheel are most likely those who are somewhat bound by budget or the DIYers who have modified it, invested lots and lots of time in their settings and everything like that and simply can't justify spending that extra money. So one thing to really bear in mind is that the last couple of years have really changed the face of sim racing. We have more titles available to us than ever, but also the introduction of direct drive wheels means that what we previously used to think was top end hardware is no longer top end hardware, belt driven wheels like the club sport wheel. We just can't class that as top end hardware anymore because we know direct drive is better. What has happened in the meantime though is Logitech has stayed in that entry level and it dominates that entry level segment, don't get me wrong, but the technology essentially hasn't changed in the past 15 years. I do think that every single person who's watching this video would love to see more from Logitech. We would all love to see something in the mid to high end level to just really kind of redefine that part of the market. It would be absolutely amazing. And in the top end, while you're at it, go make a top end wheel. Logitech has such a loyal following and such a loyal fan base that the people who could potentially upgrade to better Logitech products will upgrade regardless. They'll upgrade even if stuff isn't compatible. They'll upgrade even if stuff is very, very expensive. They've waited long enough. And I think that this video raises some questions that are on the tips of all of our tongues. So there you have it. The definitive answer to the question, should I upgrade my Logitech wheel is yes. And also no. If you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing and do leave a comment below because uh, those comments help drive the traffic to these videos. I'm Lawrence, thanks a million for watching and I'll chat to you later.